Welcome to the second part of modeling turned legs for furniture. In the first part, we went over how to model the most simple uh, kind of type. That was, that was this leg over here. Now let's continue and try to make something a bit more complicated or something like this. Now for this, even though it does look complicated, in reality, it really isn't. What you want to do is when you're modeling something like this, you want to break it down into more easier to manage elements. So if you take a look at this, this is basically made out of two elements, the top box type and the lower carved up um, cylindrical type. So let's make this or the cylindrical part. The easiest way to do it would be to go over here and now with a simple line, just trace out a line like this. So click here, here. You don't have to be very, very um, exact where you place these because uh, once we are finished, we're gonna go over and position them better closely uh, to resemble this backside image. Now, the thing here is once you start um, drawing out a line, you get to the edge. And for example, if you work on 3ds Max 2010, for some reason, uh, if you click on the middle mouse, it's going to cancel your line. But don't uh, fret, there is a way around it. All you have to do is just get to the edge and press I. That way, the uh, your screen is going to be centered at where your mouse is. So get down here, just try and trace out the profile of this thing. Like I said, no need to be overly correct. There we go, something like this. So just the profile, the outer rim. So press one to enter the vertex selection mode. And from here, now we can tweak around on the vertices. So I'm gonna select one, control A to select all of them, right click, convert to Bezier corner. This is going to give me the tangency uh, handle so I can tweak them around a bit. Oops. So we can just pull these uh, levers around. And one thing that you're probably gonna uh, get to encounter is whenever you're working with Bezier corner handles, you might get to a point where you select one of these uh, handles and you want to move it on the sides. And for some reason, the only way they can, can go is upwards or downwards. This is one of the most commonly um, made mistakes when usually people start working with this and they don't realize that what they've actually done is they've uh, locked in the axis on which they can move. For example, if you take a look here, you can see that this is the yellow line for Y and that means I can only go in the Y direction. So in order to be able to move it on the X and the Y, I can just press F8 and it is going to un lock my axis. Now I can move it around freely. So this is a nice tip if you didn't know about it. There we go. Let's just select this and try to match it so it's something like this. All right. So nothing fancy here. I'm just trying to get the basic shape in like this. I'm pretty sure if I spend a bit more time, I can get it to be uh, to closely or closer follow this main shape. But for this video, I really don't need to change or actually spend that much time to make it like that. So just for this, when I get to the edges, I can just go ahead and use a fillet, on the, oh, not on all of them. So just choose fillet, hit one on the side, one here, 
and this should give me a nice end. All right, so I've made this or the outline. So the way to get a 3D model out of the line I just drew in, I'm going to go over in the modifier list. I'm going to choose lathe modifier. Now, once you put it in, by default, usually the lathe modifier sucks. The reason for this is it's always choosing the center of your line. And we wanted to use the origin point or where we started in order to get that we have to go over here where it says align just click on the min this is going to put it at the minimum and we get something like this and we can see that now if we put it on the side we are getting a nice looking result so if we take a look at this pole on the side, we can see another thing. It has ridges into it. So the next thing that we can use here is we can change the number of segments. For example, with 16, we can see that these are too big. So we can go ahead and try 32 or maybe even 48. Yeah, this should work. And once we have this, we can call it that it's it's a good one and just make sure while you're still in the lathe modifier you just tick on this generate mapping coordinates that way the geometry will have some uv mapping applied to it so now go edit poly on top of it so we can work with this select all of the um, polygons and right now what i can see here is that once i've selected it uh, the color here is a bit dimmed that means that the normals are twisted or they're up, upside down so i have to go back to lathe i have an option here that well flip normals there we go flip normals if i click this now the normals are correct so back to edit poly and with all of these selected i can simply go and click on bevel now, when I'm on bevel, I'm going to put it at 1 and put it in minus 1. Now, what I want to do here is change the way this works from the default group normals to by polygon. And this is going to make it so that all of the polygons are extruded outwards for one centimeter and they have been tapered in for another uh, one centimeter. So I press OK with this. And now if I go ahead and turbo smooth, I'm going to see a bit of a problem like this. As you can see uh, on the middle, it's not so bad, but the, at the edges, we have an issue because it's really breaking up. So what we can do before we uh, slap on a turbo smooth is again with um, our Swift loop, we can go in here put in one extra loop like this and put in one more at the bottom. And now if we go and click on the turbo smooth, we can see that it's following it better. We don't have any break breakups at the top. So put in two durations with this we are getting the second type in. So now the only thing that we would have to do is put in the top portion over here and connect it with uh, this geometry. So the top part over here, we can do it in one of two ways. The first way would be well, let's just go ahead and start with a box. All right, so 60 by 60 and by 60. All right, let me get all of these segments to one. Get the size about correct, on the right size. All right, something like this. 
Now, the first or the easier way or the faster way would be to go ahead and now for this we're going to need some extra geometry in the top. So we're going to have to go ahead and over here increase the number of segments, something like 15, the other way around as well. So another 15 maybe. And with something like this, we're going to use a similar uh, technique we used previous on um, previously on this part in the pre, uh, in the first part where we selected a portion of the geometry and used a modifier on that portion in this case though it's going to be just a bit different because we're gonna first thing we're gonna convert it to an edible poly here I'm gonna select uh, vertices select all the uh, vertexes on the top or the vertices and now in the modifier list I'm gonna drop down and look for an FFD modifier so the FFD is basically a freeform deformer and it's going to help us uh, deform this into the shape that we want it so I'm going to select the, this FFD click on the plus and go control points with this I'm going to select all the control points now in the perspective viewport hold on alt and deselect the ones on the corners so basically i have these four control points selected and with them i'm just going to click and drag upwards something like this so if i look at it now and if i just drop an edit poly on top of it we can see that we are getting this shape in. Now, if you take a look, for example, if I rotate this for 90 degrees, or actually 180, you're going to see that it's looking very closely to this. And if I put it on top of the, the other part, we can probably even make it. So with, uh, with something like this, we can get away with it but in reality this is not exactly how this thing is made so if you want to get it to be more real so i'm going to leave it like this i'm just going to put it on the side and then hold shift and just make one more copy and i can show you the other way to making something like this that i personally prefer to do it because it's much more realistic so i'm going to delete both of the so well, since we had we had to convert it to an edible poly i don't want to have to deal with all the extra geometry so i'm just going to go ahead and make a new box again same size so 60 60 60 and one segments around so convert to an edible poly make sure it's the size that i want it to be and here is the important thing when you're using this kind of modeling at least for this por uh, portion you want to rotate your box at a 45 degree angle so this sharp way is looking towards you so you're basically looking at the widest part of the mesh or the model so now what you want to do is you go ahead in the create panel let me just minimize this in the line section in the splines you choose a line you simply make one line like this all right close the spline now i'm going to press uh, f3 so i can see it better uh, select both of these vertices right click and convert them to a bezier corner with this bezier corner what you're going to try and do here is make a smooth transition so something like this since i cannot move it on the x uh, axis i told you guys that if this is stuck all you got to do is press f8 and now you can move it freely on any of the axes so with something like this i'm going to click on the vertex to get out of the form uh, I'm gonna jump in over an interpolation and I'm gonna increase this steps 
number because I want to have a smoother transition. So instead of six, I'm probably going to go something like 20, maybe even higher, like let's see, 36. Yeah, this should work. Even thing you even 20 would have been okay, but but this is even going to be better. And I can see here that my box probably hasn't been turned correct. There we go. Now it's correctly. It's at 45 degrees. So now this is the second important thing. You want to go over in hierarchy. Click on Effect Pivot Only. This is with the line selected. Effect Pivot Only. And now you want to move this pivot to the center portion of our box. Something like this. Now, what we did here is we actually, whoops, just move it on the X axis and line it up with, there you go, with the box. Now, what we can do here is go ahead and from the modifier list, choose Again, delayed modifier. What this does is it's going to give me it's going to give me this kind of a result. In this case, uh, when it was created, it created it, it actually offset it a bit. So I need to center this with the box. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the align, click on the box. Make sure that I center it on both of them. Disengage the Z because I don't want to move it in height. So click OK now. So we have something like this. All right, now with the lathe, I'm going to put in more segments because like I said, I want to have enough information to make a smooth transition. And now I'm going to select my box in the create option. I'm going to scroll down to compound objects. From here, I'm going to click either Boolean or Pro Boolean. So when you're in here, Pro Boolean works in the way that you need to have a parameter and an action. In this case, I want to have a subtraction. So I'm going to make sure that I have subtraction selected as my parameter. And then I'm going to click on start picking. And now I'm going to click on the bottom part here, where it says line 02. Click, and this is what we end up with. We get nice rounded edges. Now, depending on how deep we want these incisions to be, I can simply go Control Z, and I can get back into the line. For example, if I want it to be deeper, I can just pull in something like this. Get this to be higher. And here is the important thing. You can control exactly how this thing is going to uh, look like or how wide this portion is going to be by just moving these lines around. So we delayed now. If I do the same thing with a Pro Boolean and I just start picking, I'm going to end up with bottom portion that's going to look something like this, which is much closer to what we want. And on top of it, if we just take a look on the bottom, we're going to see that we are left with a very flat surface that we can basically just lay on top of our base. So if we want to get uh, this on the top portion as well, which is going to have to center to object and slide in a symmetry. Make sure it's on the Y with the flipped and we end up with something like this. Now the thing here is that if you want to get these edges a bit um, less jaggedy or something like this we have to select the edges we want to make uh, rounder and with a very very small chamfer something like maybe yeah something like this should work 
maybe even three. All right. If we're not too close to it, we won't see it. So with this, we can either use it as it is like this, or you can turn off the symmetry, turn off the edit poly, and now just rotate it back to being at 45 degrees. And with this, I can just go ahead and place it on top of my original or this piece of the leg. So let's go. Again, I'm going to align it so it's in the center. Center, center, not with on the Z. So you can just click and drag it until it's in place. So now if I click on the M and apply uh, just the standard V-ray material, a gray material as a placeholder to both of them. And I can select both of them, change into black. If I deselect, this is what we actually get. If you take a look at the image, you're going to see that it is very, very close to what we initially had. Opposed to this, because this really doesn't look too much like this. So I'm going to just delete and put this on the side. So with these done, let's continue on and see if we can tackle a few more of these turned legs.